Welcome, Indiana Gear Up family, to College and Career Part Two with Mrs. Crawford. I'm glad that you guys could join me today. I'm in round two, where we will be talking about um, college and all the benefits of going to college. So you start thinking about college. This is um, excellent. This is great. Um, this could be a start to a brighter future um, of stability. Um, and just a great experience. Let's talk about the benefits of a degree. Why go to college? This is a common question that um, a lot of students um, will find themselves asking. Um, I hear this question quite a bit. Um, I can remember um, being in your shoes and having the same question. Um, College is more than just a degree. Um, aside from the valuable life experiences you'll have living on your own, managing your finances, setting your own schedule, you'll also be able to establish the groundwork for a successful career that will uh, pay hugely for you down the line later in life. Um, statistics show that a college degree helps you get better jobs and make more money over your lifetime. 60% of jobs will require education beyond high school starting this year in 2020. $22,000 is the average salary difference in the amount that college graduates earn um, annually versus those that just graduate with the high school diploma. So that's quite a big difference. Um, 50% increase in job security for college grads versus high school students, um, high school graduates. Um, so those that go the step further and get a college degree, 50% uh, of those individuals um, have an increase in job security. Um, guys, a really big um, thing that I can remember when I was um, in your shoes preparing for um, college um, was that um, a college education um, would make me more marketable. Um, in the workforce. Um, and so I really agree that um, a college education definitely helps level you up in terms of being able to be marketable for jobs. Um, however, I do um, know that as time changes, I mean, as, over time, things change, right? Um, so that was when I was getting ready for college. Um, time has changed and there's other means of getting a sustainable um, career um, that will help you take care of your family. Um, and we'll go over some of those options um, later in the presentation. Um, but another big benefit of college um, and getting a degree um, is guys, the experience of being able to go and um, learn about yourself, start um, meeting friends that will be your friends over your lifetime. Um, going to college is definitely about getting your education and learning, um, but it's also about um, your so building a social network. So what are colleges looking for um, with students? Colleges are looking for students that can dem um, demonstrate a path of strong academic success, college and career goals, grade point average, class ranks, course grades. They're looking at the placement exams, SAT, ACT, AccuPlacer scores, rigorous classes, prior college credit, industry certifications, school or community involvement. These happen to be some of the things that when college admission counselors are reviewing applications, they are looking for students that can demonstrate all of these things. Students that um, have taken rigorous classes when they were in high school. Students that have been involved in their school or community involvement. We talked a lot about that um, in part one of college and career series. It's so important that you get yourself involved um, in extracurricular activities. That is gonna be something that um, will add some weight to your college application. Um, 
when you can show that you have been a part of something outside of just academics. Academics is great. However, um, as much as you can expose yourself to different um, clubs, community involvement, maybe in your church, Indiana Gear Up is a great start. Just look for ways to continue to separate yourself and level yourself up because it's going to be huge when college admissions counselors are reviewing your applications. Make sure that you are continuing to strive to do your very best in your classes so that you have a great point average um, that will help you get into the college of your choice. We will talk later in the presentation about some college um, admission requirements and every college has their own admission requirements that you will have to be able to meet in order to apply to that college or university. We will talk later in the presentation as well about SAT, ACT, and Accuplacer and what those different exams are, what the differences are, and how you can set yourself up for success. Earning college credit in high school. This is referred to as dual credit. This is where you earn high school and college credit simultaneously. A big advantage is that it reduces number of college credits needed to graduate. So you start working on your college degree at the same time you're working on fulfilling your high school credits. This will position students to be able to graduate early um, once they get to college. If they've already taken um, college credits prior to getting on campus and in college, this will help them to be able to graduate early. Um, I can remember having a student of mine who um, was finishing her high school diploma and she also had finished a whole year of college at the same time. So when she graduated high school, she went into her college as a sophomore in college. This another bullet point that I should have placed on here is that it will help you save money. If you are finishing your high school education and you're taking um, college courses, that particular student that I just spoke about saved herself almost a whole year of college um, because at the high school that she was attending, we were paying for those college courses. We had an agreement with the college that she was attending and she was able to leverage and take advantage of that. So it goes to the next bullet point, um, 14.1 million in savings for who's your parents. And there have been 29,357 students to take advantage of dual credits while they, while they were attending and finishing their high school diploma. So this is definitely something that um, would be in your advantage to start asking your counselors and just inquiring about taking dual credit offerings. Some high schools have teachers that are certified to be able to teach these college level courses on, right on campus. And some high schools will have agreements set up with different college campus where you can take advantage of being able to go on campus um, and take college credits. I know here at Purdue Polytechnic High School, um, my students do both. I've had students that have taken college courses with some of our teachers and I've had students that have left our high school and went to IUPUI or Purdue to take um, college courses. And so this is a great way to start leveling yourself up, start preparing for college. It's a great way for you to start seeing what college courses are like um, and, if, and if it's something that you can foresee yourself doing. So this is definitely um, in your best interest to start pursuing and having those conversations with your um, guidance counselors.
advanced placement classes. So let's talk about advanced placement classes. They are different from dual credits. And we'll talk about that. Let's first talk about the five benefits that I have listed here of taking AP classes in high school. They help prepare you for college. AP classes can be as challenging as introductory college courses. They, rise to, they can help rise you to the top of the pile, meaning if there's 30 applications that a college admission counselor is looking at and there's five of those applicants who have advanced placement courses on their transcript, that is going to look good for those five students. The other 20 students, they very well may get into that same college as well, but the five that have taken the AP cl um, classes, the admissions counselors would most likely really consider them um, and will move them to the top of the pile because advanced placement classes show admission offers officers that you're ready for college level work. So that strengthens your transcript. It also will be a way for you to start studying what you love and get a head start on college requirements and save some tuition dollars. So advanced placement classes, um, just like dual credits are very, very advantageous, advantageous for students to um, pursue um, because it just it levels you up in terms of when the admissions officers are looking and making decisions. Um, the difference, but one difference that is um, very important to know um, with dual credits and AP classes, dual credits again, allow you to finish your high school courses and at the same time get college credit as well. Whereas AP classes, you don't get college credits, you are taking adv um, advanced classes, which will be more rigorous than the standard um, high school course. You will not get the college credit, but both um, are very good. And so I would be asking, um, your guidance counselors as much po as mu as many as possible questions around what kind of classes that you guys have at your high schools that will help accelerate and prepare you for college. College entrance exams. So this is a biggie. Um, college, different colleges and universities have different requirements um, for students that are applying to get admission into their colleges and universities. One big requirement that most universities um, around the country um, are going to require students to be able to meet at, um, the admissions is your college entrance exams, such as the SAT. ACT and AccuPlacer. So what's the difference? It's very important that you know what the differences um, are for those particular college entrance exams. The ACT, um, which is a very popular um, test, is an achievement based on knowledge in school. So math, English, and science it's gonna wanna cover more of your, everything that you have learned over the time that you have been in school. Whereas the SAT is more of an aptitude test and it's gonna deal a lot more with critical thinking and math and writing. The AccuPlacer exam is an exam that Ivy Tech uses and it's gonna help assess your math, English and writing and it is not a time test whereas the ACT and the SAT test are timed tests. Um, AccuPlacer um, does not time you, um, and it will test your um, college readiness. All three of those tests are put in place to test students' college readiness. You would need to know the different sign-up dates for these exams. Um, the AccuPlacer doesn't really per se have a sign-up date, 
Um, and it really just depends on when um, you would be taking a course through Ivy Tech as to when you need to be able to satisfy the requirement for the AccuPlacer. Typically, students would only have two times to be able to take it in a school year to demonstrate that they are college and career ready. Um, the ACT and the SAT do have sign up dates. I'm going to, on the next slide, um, give you websites that you guys can start exploring to get more information on test dates and SAT and ACT um, information. Those websites also will um, have in abundance um, different um, material and resources that you can take advantage of for study sessions and free study material. So it's very important um, that you um, write these websites down or um, save this presentation so that you can later go back and um, start looking into um, the SAT and ACT um, and preparing yourself for those. These are the college entrance exam websites, um, sat.collegeboard.org slash home. And then we have www.actstudent.org. So I highly suggest you explore those um, websites get familiar with them. You will need to eventually create an account. Um, it's free of charge. You would create the, create the account. The account will allow you to be able to use that sign up to be able to start signing up for um, your assessments when it's time to take them. You typically, most students don't take the SAT and the ACT um, until around there. Um, Junior, um, going into their junior year, sometimes you'll have students take them early just to get exposure to it. But typically um, junior year um, is when students um, will start taking um, those assessments. So you've, to this point, you've learned about um, some things you need to be um, doing right now to prepare for um, college being an option. Now you may be at the place where you're saying, what will I study? What is it that I'm going to study? I, I know I want to go to college. I, I've seen the many benefits of going to college. And now I want to know what I will study. I don't know. And guess what, guys? It's OK to not know right away. Um, there's quite a bit of students that did not know what they wanted to study going right into college. I was one of them. So I'm, I'm very familiar with how that is um, to not know. And that's completely okay. You have career and counseling services on campus that can assist you um, with um, making a decision and figuring that out. Um, in the meantime, you would be what they would consider an undecided student um, and you will be taking general ed classes such as your uh, math, your science, your English. And just remember what you study will mean more than where you go. So it's very important to make sure that what you study in college is going to be something that will lend to you getting a um, a career or job that is both enjoyable and that will um, help you earn a high wage salary. Degree programs, the different, there are a variety of different degree programs. Um, and the different degree programs, let's talk about them. Um, associate degree. Associate degrees are two year degrees. Um, typically 60 credit hours are what would be required for you to um, earn an associate of science or an associate of arts. Um, I put bookkeeping and radiology texts um, as just two um, areas that um, students can study. There's a variety. I just um, gave an example. Um, you get an associate degree from a school such as an Ivy Tech, uh, Vincennes University. Um, Two-year um, degrees um, are 
excellent. Um, they um, will still provide you many options upon graduation. Um, and I happen to be someone that actually went to um, um, a school that offered two year degrees. Um, I went to a school in Illinois um, and then I transferred into um, a four year university. Um, where I was able to earn my bachelor degree. So bachelor degree, that is a four year degree. Um, you will need to earn 120 credit hours in order to um, get your bachelor of science or a bachelor of arts. Um, I put nursing, accountants and teachers as some examples that um, of careers that people that um, obtain a bachelor degree um, will, um, the fields that they'll go into. Um, another um, degree program or just a program is certifications. Um, I know at Purdue Polytechnic High School this year we were able to offer information technology um, as a certification course. Um, that provides short-term job training, several hours to one year um, is the length of different certifications and it really just depends um, if it's a forklift certification welding truck driving certified nursing assistant or medical assistant whether um, depends on what it is information technology that will de determine how long um, it takes to earn that certification but certifications are great options for students that may decide that college maybe isn't the route for them. You could still take a, get a certification, um, come out um, of that certification um, with a bunch of different skills and be ready for the workforce. Um, so certifications are a great option for students that may not um, want to attend college and that are looking to go right into the industry right away. Then you have apprenticeships and trade schools. Um, the duration of time to finish those programs can range anywhere from two to five years. It combines on, on the job training and schooling at the same time. Um, some examples of some apprenticeships um, or trade school could be plumbers, electricians, welders. Um, those are just some examples of some type of programs that fall under the apprenticeships and trade schools. Most High schools will have connections with different um, colleges or different career centers in their communities that will offer um, apprenticeships and different trades. So it's important, again, once you um, have start thinking about um, the path you're going to take um, after high school, make sure you start having these conversations um, with um, your guidance counselor so that they can give you as much information as possible about the variety of options that you will have upon graduating from high school. All very beneficial and it really just solely depends on the student. What works for one student may not work for the next student. Um, you, you could earn a certification and still decide to go get an associate's degree. You can earn a certific certification and still go into a four-year school and get a four-year bachelor's degree. Um, so, and again, the path I took was I went to a two-year school where I obtained an associate's degree. Once I got the associate's degree, I transferred into a four-year university where I was able to um, stay for two years and um, get my bachelor's degree. So I started at the, uh, um, the community college, went there for two years, graduated, transferred into a four-year university. I had two years left. Um, I finished those two years and I was able to um, get my Bachelor's of Arts degree. So everybody's path and journey will be different. Um, there is not a right or wrong path, it's just what works for you. Now let's talk briefly about college admissions requirements. Um, they will vary, it really just depends on what college or university. Um, but it's very important that you understand each college um, that you may be interested in their admission requirements. You need to review their websites under admissions so that you can get familiar with what you need to um, do to gain admission. You need to identify what placement assessments that university requires you that you take because different universities will have different requirements to um, identify where you are academically 
and that is the way that they determine what classes you start you will take when you get into their school you need to start understanding what the admission due dates are they vary there's different um, admission due dates for spring winter and fall um, for um, every university so again start reviewing those colleges and universities their websites and getting familiar with when you need to start um, doing your um, applications typical requirements um, that um, colleges have um, include letter of intent college essays those are um, very um, standard a lot of colleges will require you to write an essay um, resume have an official high school transcript, SAT and ACT scores, letter of recommendations, face-to-face -face meeting with admissions, thank you letters um, are encouraged, and um, college application fees. So typically there is always a college application fee when you're applying. Um, again, I would really um, go to your guidance counselors and seek advisory um, on um, gaining different um, knowledge about what each college um, has for as in regards to requirements and a lot of the things on the right side um, as far as the typical requirements a lot of these things your guidance counselors can help you with such as um, how do I go about writing an essay how do I build my resume and how do I um, get a resume that looks good um, your official high school transcripts, your guidance counselors um, can handle that and help you with that. And your SAT and ACT scores, um, they can't help you with your scores. They will help you get signed up and let you know when the tests are coming up. Just taking a brief look at annual tuitions for full-time students. Um, a full-time student is considered um, someone who takes anywhere from 12 to 15, 12 or more credit hours um, once they get to college. And if you look here, there are um, options for every student. You look at Ivy Tech, $4,350. Um, these um, prices and tuitions, um, this was information that was available um, as of September 2019. Um, tuition does change um, from time to time with different colleges. It just really depends. Sometimes there's a tuition freeze, and that's great because that means that whatever the rate was in 2020, um, the rate could be will be the same in 2021. It just really depends. So that's something that um, you have to do your research on and look and see what tuition um, costs are for each um, college. Um, and as you can see, it just gets more and more expensive um, as you uh, go down. Um, but there are options for each, um, for everybody. Um, Ivy Tech is a great option. Um, IU, University of Southern Indiana, you have Ball State, Indiana State, IUPUI, Purdue, of course, Boiler Up, and IU. Um, and as you can see, um, the, the cost of college, and this is per semester, is, could be very expensive. Um, and so this was based on a full academic year, which is nine months at 15 credit hours per semester. So you might be looking at this saying, this is a lot of money. It is. So let's talk about financial aid and helping to pay for college and what the importance of um, financial aid is and what are the different financial aid that is available for students. You have scholarships and grants. That is a gift aid that does not need to be repaid. Those are awesome. That is what everybody should um, aim for is to get as many scholarships and grants as possible because you don't have to repay those. Grants are often, often considered need based. So they're typically for students that are, um, that are in need. Scholarships are often considered merit based. Um, loans. Um, that's borrowed money that must be repaid according to the term set by the lender. Um, at all costs, you try to avoid loans, if at all possibilities. You don't want to graduate college having to um, pay back a large sum of money. The reality is that is, um, that is typical. Um, 
I, I um, can speak um, a lot about that, but if you can avoid borrowing money uh, to pay for it, your education, and you can um, make sure that you um, make yourself eligible to receive scholarships, that is awesome because you won't have to repay um, the scholarship money and loans, you will have to pay those back. Work study, um, work study um, are, is usually available at most campuses um, and it is funding college through employment. Um, I did participate in work study um, and what I did was I checked everybody's dorm. Um, I sat in the dorm office and as students were um, accessing their dorm rooms, they had to show their student ID badge and that is um, what I did for work study. And that was um, funds that I was able to use to um, help pay for my college education. Um, I was on a full ride basketball scholarship, um, but I also had um, other things that I um, wanted to be able to buy for myself. And so work study was an awesome way for me to be able to um, get some extra money. The FAFSA, um, that is free application for federal student aid. It is um, something that you will have to complete um, when it is time for you to um, start applying for your college. So your senior year, you will need to um, create this account. Um, and I've listed the website here, you create an account. Um, Parents would have to enter their tax information. Um, it will go over grants and loans, and you need to understand the filing deadline. There is going to be a there is a filing deadline for FAFSA, and we'll go over that on the next slide. Um, FAFSA deadlines: um, the initial filing is April fifteenth for Indiana. Um, and that is um, very important that you meet that requirement. Um, it could change um, by the time um, it, you're ready to start applying to college. Um, but right now, April 15th is what the deadline is um, for filing your FAFSA in the state of Indiana. Corrections and updates are June 1st and FAFSAs must be filed every year that you plan to enroll in college. So until you graduate, um, you file a um, FAFSA. These are some very, um, very important resources in terms of scholarships. Um, if you can explore these websites, it would be super helpful for you and your family um, to start um, navigating those websites and learning about different scholarship opportunities that are available. There are lots of scholarship pro programs available for who's your students. Each has its own requirements, but you should apply for all that you're eligible for. That way you can be sure to get the maximum amount of scholarship assistance to help pay for college. These happen to be some of the scholarship um, opportunities for um, Indiana students, 21st Century Scholars, Frank O'Bannon Grant, the Mitch Daniels Early Graduation Scholarship, Minority Teacher Scholarship, Student Teaching Stipend for Minorities, Student Teaching Stipend for High Needs Fields, National Guard's Supplement Grant, National Guard Extension Scholarship, and Child of Veteran and Public Safety Officer Supplemental Grant Program. These just happen to make up some of the many um, different opportunities that um, students will have in terms of scholarships and grants. And that concludes um, our presentation for today. Um, if you have any questions, um, please, um, please um, direct your questions to your building coordinators who all know how to get in touch with um, me um, or um, your guidance counselors at your high schools. Bye.